Hi, Matt Klaus, Teams to Be Seen podcast. I'm here with Andrew Gibson, the director of Gutterbug. Here, let me, I'm just going to hold it. Okay. <laughs> We've, I've been having technical difficulties trying to get this set up. This looks up. pretty good now. Though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he is the director of Tara and I's favorite film in the festival so far. It's moving, it's beautiful. Uh, do you know about when that's going to be available for streaming or, or home? I don't know. I, I hope... Um I hope this fall, um, but we're kind of just been like doing the festival thing this year, 2019, and then um, hoping it'll go to streaming in the fall or, or maybe the spring. Okay. Uh, I think if we don't hit the fall, we might hold off until the spring. That's that we're excited for that because yeah. if if there is like a purchase, a physical purchase for it, I'd like to do. We're that. gonna put it on a VHS. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. So if you have a VHS player, you can watch it on VHS uh, Cyber Monday. We're going to put those on. Do you soon. own any VHS? I do, yeah. Like What's your favorite film you still have on VHS? Dune. David Dune? Dune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, just for weird reasons. It's not, I don't think it's the best movie. It's not like my favorite movie like for, like for that I've like studied like as, as, a, as a filmmaker, but just for personal reasons. That oh, yeah. movie, I just love it. I, I'm probably torn between. I still have Big Trouble in Little China. Nice. And um, <laughs> Legend. Have you ever seen Legend? Um, I don't think so. Tim Curry, Tom Cruise, and Mia Sara. It's like wow. a fantasy film. Tim okay. Curry's in this giant like devil makeup. Wow. It's really cool. Wow. Yeah, um, I love weird weird VHS movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we do too. Yeah. We're a huge John Carpenter fans. Yeah, so. totally. Um, one film you'd have to take on a desert island. That's all you can watch while you're on this desert island. Yeah. What would it be? Dune. Dune? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I've probably seen that movie like, I don't know, 10 or 20 times. And uh, I think I would bring that because it's so dense. Like yeah. you, you could watch like, I'll watch like 10 minutes of that movie. I'll watch 20 minutes of that movie. Like I'll very rarely watch it front to back because it's like three hours long. Right. And it's like so confusing. Um, but I feel like it's so dense that you could just chip. You could watch like ten minutes a day if you're on a desert island, and just keep rewatching it. Right. Because um, there's just a lot to digest there. Um, your film is moving. I physically wept through parts. Awesome. Um, if you would want your audience to take anything with them after the film ended, mm -hmm. what what would it be? I mean, I think it's different for everybody. I think more than anything, like like you said, I want people to be moved by it. Like, I think we, we wanted it to be like a roller coaster ride. I think it was cool seeing in the planetarium yesterday because um, it almost felt like a, a roller coaster or like an amusement park because you're kind of looking straight up. But we, we designed the script so that it would be a roller coaster ride of, of emotions as you follow the book. So um, I wanted people to leave the theaters with just a bunch of emotions. You know, and if you're a mom, you might feel a different way than if you're an 18-year-old kid watching it. But we wanted there to be like like a lot packed in there so that it can hit on different emotions like we want to basically want people to laugh and we want people to cry to have like those two like really high highs and really low lows right um so i think people get different i've heard a lot of different reactions from it but the important thing is that people feel something that's yeah awesome mm -hmm. um okay so we were just talking about your actors and yesterday I asked you the question of how your actors researched um, you've also said that you've had experiences of people coming up to you and telling you that they were homeless I was at one time homeless um, you had another person come up and tell you they were homeless yeah do you look forward to any sort of social reaction to this film because it is touching on a very intricate subject yeah I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like hearing, hearing you come to me and tell me that you were homeless and you saying that we got a lot right, like that to me is like the most gratifying thing is like, because the last thing we wanted to do was like be contrived or like be like, you know, glorifying it or anything like that. But it's like, it's tough because so much can go wrong with production. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we shot the thing in 17 days. So like, obviously we weren't able to do everything the exact way I wanted to, but I'm happy that it came out authentic in that regard because like that was like really important to me. Um, and as far as like the social stuff, like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's tough because it's like, I want to like reach out to like, you know, uh, homeless shelters and like, you know, uh, like rehab centers. Like there's a lot of stuff that I want to do and a lot of people that I want to see it, but it's like as a DIY production, like at least right now, there's only so much that we can do. So like having people like you and, and having publications cover it and like help us get the word out has been huge. Um, because yeah, we want, we want people to see it that have gone through this stuff or that are going through this stuff. Um, 
but it's hard on the indie level to like get that reach. So we've been slowly building like over the last five or six months, and I think that like every city we've screened in, it's like had a good response, and like we've kind of continued to, to grow and snowball. So my hope is that is that yeah, it'll have a cultural impact, and like you know, kind of be one of those films that that can get revisited, um, you know, in, in homeless shelters and rehab facilities, and people can learn and grow from it. You know, there are films that people in those communities really cling to. Mm -hmm. SLC Punk being one. Yeah. When I was when I was homeless, I know that yeah. I really clung to yeah. SLC Punk as yeah. uh, sticking to a virtue, even mm -hmm. though you were in this felt like godless world. Right, right, right. Um, your film does that very well. You also said that between shoots, it was kind of like a party. It was a young cast. Yeah, we all had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. What was the dichotomy between shooting those really intense emotional scenes, yeah, the ones yeah. that, like, even there are even some scenes that Tara and I are horror movie buffs, yeah. and there are even some scenes there that we were like, whoa. Yeah. Um, what was the dichotomy between between shoots when you were mm -hmm. all having fun and, and then actually shooting those difficult scenes? Yeah, I mean, I think that the two most intense, I mean, the most intense scene, I, I, I mean, aside from the, well, I guess spoilers, does, does spoilers? Spoilers are, uh, spoilers are always a thing on our, because okay. we, we break down films. Yeah, and okay. So, like, the, the two scenes, like, when they rob the convenience store and then um, when they shoot the neighbor, like, the neighbor one is, like, intense, but it's also, like, kind of comical in a way. Um, so, like, you know, we get multiple reactions. It's kind of a polarizing scene because some people are, like, that took me out of it. Some people think it's funny. Some people think it's crazy. Some people think it, like, it, it works. Um, but that one was more fun because, like, as we were doing it, it was just, like, kind of comical, just seeing the neighbor fall like that. We had a stunt person. We did all in post. Um, but the scene when they robbed the bodega, that was really intense. And, like, that whole night was really intense because we only had, like, an hour to do it. And um, the stunt guy was there. And, like, it, it was just a really intense scene. And the whole night was really intense because, like, that was, like, for me, like, the biggest scene in the film. That's kind of when everything really ramps up and really changes. So... We were having a lot of fun on set, but like once we got into that scene, like uh, Andrew Yackel, he was like very intense that night. I remember, and he was like kind of on edge that night, and it kind of like made everybody on edge. But it, it was it was cool. And then I I enjoyed. Um, I have a cousin who also has. I enjoyed your representation of someone with Asperger's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there came a point in the film. Well, let me adjust a little bit. I'm having an issue. Okay. Um, there came a point in the film where I was like, oh wow, this is a awesome representation. Mm -hmm. the, the convenience store yeah. owner, or the kid who runs the convenience store, yeah. the character's name is Eddie. Yeah, uh, Jenkins. Yeah, obviously yeah. has uh, Asperger's. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And it's an excellent representation. Yeah. How did that yeah. come about? So we, I mean, it was in the script, um, and we did an open casting in Boston. Most of our, oh, he actually, we he came to our casting, but he also responded to our, our uh, casting online that we had put out um, and the, the the description it called for like a, a, store, a store clerk that was um, you know had some form of autism uh, had a stutter um, was you know mentally challenged and somewhere you know, we weren't exactly sure but we know we wanted him to have some sort of autism so that like it, Bug was taking advantage of him. essentially the crew was taking advantage of him. right um, and it was something that was like very obvious, um, but he's kind of like the you know the really good-hearted, good-spirited, means well. You know, right. you really want to feel for him, so that when when Bug goes and does that, it's really heartbreaking, and it's kind of like his really his lowest point in a way. Um, so we that was in our casting call, and, and he responded to it, and we had a number of people come out and do the audition, and he came out and do the audition, and like after he delivered the first take. We were like, dude, that was amazing. And then he like hung around and we talked to him and he was really cool and was, uh, he's been acting since he was like, you know, uh, a kid basically and has played similar roles. Um, so he was like very self aware of it and very into it and was like really down to go for it. And uh, yeah, he was amazing. He's, he's, he's really cool to work with and uh, he's come to a couple of the screenings and like we've kept in touch. He just sent me this play that he wrote, which is really cool. Um, that we might try to try to help him out with, but yeah, he's an awesome dude. Billy Jenkins, keep an eye out for him. <laughs> uh, we, and, Andrew Yackel definitely is going to get a lot of praise for this film. Yeah. I also wanted to um, give a shout out to the people that watch us and mm -hmm. to the people who see Gutterbug mm -hmm. uh, for Hannah Mosqueda, mm -hmm. who is amazing in this yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, she is. Um, was that a makeup? How, how was the makeup on her? Or well, she well it, yeah. So she was she was shooting a film in New Zealand. 
and when we pushed our shoot back actually to accommodate her because we really wanted to work with her. She had been a, worked on this other film that we saw. Uh, it was called so, Three Strange Men, I think it was called. I hope I got that right. But it was awesome. And she played like a drifter, a vagabond kind of character. So like, oh, she'd be perfect. And then she got this other gig in New Zealand, and then we ended up pushing our shoot back so that we could have her be in it. And like two weeks before the shoot, she's like, "Hey, I'm doing this thing. Like, they want to shave my head." Is that okay? Like, I mean, I don't know. It's not much I can do, but like, I just want to let you guys know. Right. I was like, no, that's awesome. That's, like, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, you look badass. It's I, mean, awesome. I think we had talked about like in the script, maybe she had like dyed hair, or she had like some sort of yeah, something. something funky, mohawk, or like something weird. So when she said shaved head, we're like, sure, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So she showed up with a shaved head, but she also showed up like super skinny. And like part of the character that she was playing, the other thing was like she was like skinny and malnourished, so it was like perfect. Um, so she really looked like like a junkie. Um, yeah. So that was like kind of a blessing in disguise. Uh, a lot of the people that I know from the streets from that time in my mm -hmm. life um, have substance abuse problems. Yeah. And you see the physical change in them from yeah. when you knew them before until yeah. after. Yeah. Um, I personally want to thank you for taking your time out to talk to us. I know we're a tiny little podcast. That oh, just, no, it sounds awesome. We're the guinea pig for the festival. Yeah. Like, they've never had a podcast cover the yeah. festival before. Yeah. So, it's a very um, cool festival. You have we're our favorite City. movie yeah. of the festival. Awesome. Awesome. It was so cool of you to meet with us. Absolutely. Uh, Andrew Gibson, watch for his next films. Yeah. Watch for Gutterbug. Yeah. Coming fall? Spring? We'll see, fall or spring, yeah. Okay. That we highly recommend. Adopt, don't shop.